this module, you'll begin to use the help of AI with your search efforts, relying on a tool called Perplexity. We'll first introduce the tool, navigating through its interface, understand its capabilities, learn some best prompt practices for Perplexity, and examine how much it costs to go pro. From there, we'll see just how powerful Perplexity's pro search really goes and learn to organize our conversations with threads. And with this newfound knowledge in mind, we'll pair Perplexity with sites like Reddit to extract key insights when doing market research. Once you finish this module, you'll see search and research in a different light, perhaps even using Perplexity more than Google itself. And so, let's not waste any more time and start with AI search. Perplexity markets itself as an AI-powered search engine. It provides accurate, trusted, and real-time answers to any question. And it works like any other LLM where you just chat with it and can get text generation or even gem image generation directly from the platform. Some of its key features include AI-powered questioning and answering, as well as real-time information retrieval. And it's really well known for its trusted responses. When it comes to Perplexity's pricing model, it's quite simple. Either you go free or you go pro. For the most part, I find that the free version is quite powerful and sufficient itself. And if you're not going to be making Perplexity your go-to AI chatbot, and you perhaps switch between ChatGPT or whatnot, then just go with free. However, if you're thinking of relying on Perplexity fully, perhaps pro would be good since it offers more pro searches compared to free where you're only limited to about four to five pro searches per five or six hours. And with the pro model, you also have the option to switch between different models, whether you want to use a GPT model or Claude model. So you have that option as well. And there's a couple of key features you can also use like perplexity pages with the pro as well, but we'll cover that later in the course. Perplexity also helps you organize your different conversations and everything into something called spaces. Now this was previously known as collections, which would existed in your library, but now they've created a separate tab for it called spaces. And this allows you to collaborate with others by creating different collections of conversations and, and just kind of houses everything in a single folder. So you can go ahead and start creating a space by just going to spaces and creating a space. Just give your space a title, such as, for example, generative A insights. And then you can write a description, a space for the latest insights on generative AI. You can even add an emoji to give it some distinction. Let me just say robot. And then you can even choose the AI model that you want whatever conversations you're going to have within the space to take from. So you can see all the different types of models that it offers from Grok, Claude, and GPT-4.0. I'll just leave this one blank. And then you can give it custom instructions, for example, whether you want the answers in bullet point form, a specific tone, or prioritizing specific types of responses. So prioritize data-driven insights. And you can just press hit continue, and if it will create a space like so. And then once you enter, you can then see this little interface where on the right, you can upload a couple of files that you have to give the space some knowledge base, right? So you can add a file. Let's say I have these reports here. I can add this here and then I can let that upload in. And what will this will do is train this space to be able to pull from these files directly as well as the web or any other knowledge base that it perplexity is pulling from. So it's a combination of both, right? So this is slightly dope. So moving forward, if you're going to have a conversation within the space, you can make it pull from the web alone or the space files that you uploaded. So you can see here, and then you can also attach images or attach images or files separately as well. And so see, now you see all the files have been uploaded and keep in mind to be able to upload files, you do need a pro account. But yeah, that's pretty much how it'll work. And so moving forward, if I cr ask, create a thread within the space, so uh, tell me the latest advancements 
in generative AI from in 2004. You can just create a conversation and it's going to be pulling from the web. And as I noted earlier, you can get it to pull from, can get it to pull from space files as well. So conversations that I will be having within this, within this space will be pulling from both the files, the knowledge base that you've uploaded as well as the web. So this is what makes it a lot more unique than just having a conversation separately on perplexity. And then you can also invite people to this space so that if you're working with a team or other individuals, they can also add to this. And you can also share this to the public or make it just a secret space for yourself. And you can even edit the space later on moving forward. So this is just another great way to collaborate with others when it comes to a larger project, but also organize all of your conversations in specific spaces that all follow a given theme. So when it comes to using Perplexity Pro Search, there are more benefits because that allows you Perplexity to tackle more complex queries from multi-step reasoning to advanced math and programming computations. And it also will do research much more thoroughly. So let's say if you were to type in something that relates to uh, find the best spots to travel during the months of December in Latin America. If I were to just choose the web, you'll know, oh wait, you'll notice here that just as a non-pro, it'll just give general, it'll scrape through the web and it'll still do a fine job at that. But when you put on, turn on pro, and let's say copy this and I'll start a new thread, and then I have pro on, you're going to see that with pro search, it actually goes and shows you its reasoning process. So you can see that it searched for the best travel spots in Latin America during December, and then it just summarized the best findings by gathering all the efficient information. And so this really can show you the way that it's reasoning through and even the responses that it's given is a little bit more thought out compared to if you were just to do a general search. So if we go back to the general search, it just sort of gives you these responses on a more like just quick bullet point form. But with pro search, they actually narrowed things down much deeper and gave you a specific reasoning of why. So when it comes to very simple queries, you won't really be able to see much of a difference. Of course, as I mentioned in the back end, it's just reasoning through much better. But when it comes to much more complex queries, this is where perplexity really shines. And so let's say if we are going to ask it something such as how might cultural perceptions of privacy change societies increasingly adopt smart technologies that collect personal data. So this is a question a query that might require a little bit of a deeper reasoning and thought process. And of course, you can just search the web or choose. But instead, let's just try their reasoning function and put this on pro. And if I were to enter this, then it's going to start researching this and really thinking about the question at heart. So you can see that it took a little bit of time just to think through this question. And then it'll give you the answers as noted. Right. So, and this really comes down to solving mathematical problems as well. Perhaps even when it comes to programming, this is much better use pro search. So, you know, these are the benefits that you get when it comes to using pro search. Perplexity pages is a new feature on Perplexity Pro, which allows you to turn your research into shareable articles, helping you connect with a global audience. All you have to do to access this is hover over library and you'll see this plus sign and you can create a page from there or you can just go into your library and select from page here. So if I were to create this, you're going to see this page that you see where you can just put in your title or more so than a title, 
what you really want to talk about. So this can be from anything. They even give you some suggestions down below. I want to write about a guide to front end development or beginners. So then I can also choose how I want to target this. So does this want to be for anyone, beginners or experts? So if it's going to be experts, it's going to adjust its language so that people that already know about this topic will be able to uh, understand the lingo that it's leveraged. But if you want to just start with beginners or audit anyone, this also works as well. From here, it's as simple as just pressing enter and you're going to be able to see the process of perplexity creating out this page specific for beginners. So you see it's going step by step into the process of mastering CSS created in Flexbox, incorporating CSS preprocessors, and along the way, you can even check out the different sources that it's leveraging. And while it's going down, so it more works much similar to a query, but the difference is now is just organizing this into a nice fully fledged page, which then you can add further onto here. So this was, this is adding a specific section here. So you can either insert a section down here between the specific folds or at the bottom, just keep expanding on it. And you have a couple of options, much like any text editor where you can add media text. If this is the format that you want it to be media and text or just media only. You can keep it to be concise or detailed throughout. Let's say if we want to keep it detailed. Now I'll even give you some suggestions based off of what it knows about the topic. It'll give some suggestions that you can further write about. So if I want to talk about advanced grid layout techniques, I can just click that and I've made it into a detailed format. So it'll start expanding on this, giving you some code along the way. So if you don't have any ideas yourself, you can just leverage the suggestions that they provide. But if you know what you want to expand and how you want to organize this page, you can just write it out yourself, just like a typical prompt query would. And so this is a really great way to organize your thoughts and learning processes. So if you're learning something, you can almost use these pages as just kind of a, a guide and you can insert sections anywhere in between. You can also add media, then it's going to generate some sort of media based off of what it's finding on the web or something generating it on its own. And if you want to, you can just hit publish or you can just preview it as it would be. Um, and if you do publish it, then there's a chance that it will show up in discover. So you see a lot of these uh, articles or pages on the discover mode. And these are other users having created much similar pages as well. So this LAMC, he wrote, it, he created a page on China having the most powerful laser and it's been viewed 5,000 times, shared 245 times. So these are really fast ways to create content about a given subject. And I have no doubt as perplexity continues to evolve and advance, these pages are going to serve as sort of the new learning blocks that people will be able to learn specific subjects. And if you want to access your pages, once again, you just hit library and you can just hit the pages tab and you have a bunch of pages that are set up here. And that's what perplexity pages does. When it comes to perplexity, think of it more like a wrapper that relies on its own LLM on, as well as le pulling from other LLMs out there like ChatGPT or Claude. So if you go into your settings, you just have, you can go straight down to the perplexity pro and then you can choose the different AI models that you want it to pull from. So you have a, quite a lot of selections here and they're always adding more as well as image generation model when it comes to generating images. So you can make it pull from DALI or you can even select Stable Diffusion Excel, which will create images off of Stable Diffusion's model. So this is one of the great things about Perplexity is that you have a lot more flexibility in terms of which model you want to choose. Perplexity provides in-depth, up-to-date information on various topics, scraping the web to be able to find the right trends and competitor activities, or even just consumer behavior information, all by looking at the internet. And so you can start off by giving an example prompt, which could be provide a comprehensive analysis of the dog treat e-commerce market over the past three years, include key players, market size, growth trends, and emerging technologies. Present the information in structured format with bullet points for easy readability. And a result that you might be able to see is something like this.
You can also use Perplexity to do academic research by just choosing the focus of its search for academic. And this will scrape through databases like PubMed or Semantic Scholar to find different academic journals, scholarly articles, and the research papers specifically. An example prompt here that you can write is summarize the latest peer-reviewed research on neuromarketing within the field of consumer psychology, focus on studies published in the last five years, and highlight key findings and methodologies. And then you would get a result like this. So you can look at some of the references and check back and click whether or not the research really makes sense to what you are looking for. You can also get perplexity to focus on searching through YouTube, targeting its searches to online videos, providing different timestamps if required, and giving you the option to watch videos directly in the platform itself. So an example prompt here could be something like, find and summarize the key points from recent video content discussing advancements in artificial intelligence for autonomous vehicles. Include insights from expert interviews, demonstrations, or explanatory videos from reputable sources. So it's going to search through the web or YouTube on videos related to the topic you provided. And then example would be like this. And so this time you'll notice that the sources are actually going to be pulling directly from YouTube videos itself. You can also even check watch the videos on your right hand side. You can also use perplexity to search through different community discussions, specifically on Reddit giving you a little bit more of a streamlined experience that filters out the noise. So an example prompt here could be analyze recent social media trends and discussions related to generative AI on Reddit and Twitter, provide an overview of public sentiment, viral content, and influential voices contributing to the conversation across major platforms. And so you might see a result that shows up like this, where majority of the resources are going to be pulled from Reddit. But I do recommend always referring back to the original source to see if it makes sense. You can also use perplexity to focus on solving complex math problems, and this has only gotten better with its pro version. So you can start off with an example prompt such as solve the following calculus problem involving differentiation and integration, and then just type in the formula or the math problem itself, or even attach a screenshot of the problem. And you would get a result that shows this. So you can see that with perplexity solving math problems, it really references Wolfram Alpha, which is a huge knowledge base of different mathematical problems. And it can even explain everything to you step by step.